Okay. Okay, so it's almost Thanksgiving, and everybody's wanting to know how to do pumpkin pies. And I just have two um, nine inch regular pie shells, or you can do it with one um, nine inch round deep dish, but I prefer it this way. It just divides up better, it cooks better. I have a baking sheet up under it, and I'm going to show you how to do pumpkin pie. Now, I just take the pumpkin in the can. It's 100% pure pumpkin. It's Libby's. Let me just get a spoon here. And just going to run it around the rim and get it all into a bowl. And um, just going to show you how to mix it up. Put it in your pie shells. Um, I just bought the frozen pie shells from the store. Just because it's easier, especially around Thanksgiving when you're cooking a lot of food. And it's not quite Thanksgiving yet, but I wanted to show how to do this. Um, just kind of getting ready for Thanksgiving. Anyways, let's see here. Now, you've got your pumpkin in the bowl. Now you want to go ahead and um, it's just one whole can of the pumpkin, like I said one whole can of that right there and you're good to go. I'm going to do the dry ingredients first and then I'm going to mix the wet ingredients because it's just easier um, for me. There's no specific reason why you have to do it that way. But I'm going to do three-fourths of a cup of sugar and put it right in there with it. Let's see. Two, three. Okay. Now, that is three-fourths of a cup sugar. I'm just going to dump it right in. Okay? Just like that. And then I'm going to do a half a teaspoon of salt. Because salt is important for pies. If you don't have that little bit of salt in there, it's not going to set well. Okay, half a teaspoon of salt. And that is half a teaspoon. Um, I want to take a whole teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and we're just going to shake it out like this, because I'm always afraid to put too much cinnamon. If you take this tab off, you can get it out easier, but I don't like to, because I might mess up and stomp my toe on the cinnamon. You can fix it by adding a little bit more sugar to it, but... Who wants to fix something they messed up? Okay, now, you got your cinnamon. A whole teaspoon of cinnamon. Okay. And then, you take, um, it's like, it's half a teaspoon of ground ginger. Now, I am going to take this off, this lid off, because it's just a little easier with this kind. Okay. That's a half teaspoon of ground ginger. And we're going to do a fourth of a teaspoon of the ground cloves. Now, not much of that at all. Okay, fourth of a teaspoon of ground cloves. And now you're done with your dry ingredients. So you can start with your wet ingredients. And I'm going to go ahead and start with um, two large eggs. I'm just going to crack them in a bowl. Make sure they're good. No yucky stuff in them. Make sure there are no shells in them as well. You don't want shells. Okay. They're all good. Throw them in just like that. Now, I am going to use an electric mixer for this um, simply because it adds a little bit of air into the pie and I'm just going to open this can of evaporated milk like so and I poke two little holes in it with a little can opener like that just so the milk will come out faster and you're going to put a whole can of evaporated milk. Now just to go over that again I put a whole can of pumpkin 
I put um, three fourths of a cup of sugar, a half a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of ground ginger, a fourth of a teaspoon of ground cloves, two large eggs, and one whole can of evaporated milk. Now you can mix this up with a spoon. Um, it's not going to turn it, I mean, it's, if you do it with an electric mixer, it's just going to add a little bit of air to your mixture. That way it kind of bakes up not all, um, how do I explain it? Not all cake down in the, in the pie shell once you bake it. It'll be like a little bit light and airy for you once you cut into it. Once you start eating it, it won't all be smushed down in the pie shell if you just do it with an electric mixer. And it doesn't take that long, but it's going to get loud, so I'll just be quiet and do this. On low speed, um, the lowest speed setting you, you, that you have, just mix it for maybe a minute. and it may splatter like it did here but that's okay if it splatters we don't care okay now all I'm gonna do is make sure everything kind of got off the sides of the edge of the bowl okay you don't want to mess with that airiness of your mixture here because you put a little bit of air into the mixture it'll bake up really nicely for you now this is the trick it's very soupy. This is the consistency it should be. Very soupy. Okay. And you're going to put it in your pie shells. Um, I'll show you how to fill the pie shells. This is a trick, I'm going to tell you. Okay. You're going to take it and just kind of pour it into your pie shells. Keep an eye on it. Make sure you're not getting too much in the one pie shell and not the other one. Now, we're going to take it and kind of tip it like that. All right, evenly in each pie shell, it'll work out. This is just the way that I do it to try to get it right. A little bit in each one so that it evens out. Okay, now that's it. That's all you're going to do is you're going to put it in your pie shell just like that. Now, um, you're going to put them in the oven. See, it's almost to the rim of each pie shell. It's going to bake up a little bit, but that's the reason I have the, um, the pan up under it in case it bubbles over and bakes over, which it sometimes does and sometimes doesn't. You, that's why I have the, the baking sheet there for you. Um, I'm going to put it in the oven. I already have my oven uh, preset to 350. Um, Preheat the oven on 350 and just leave it on 350 uh, for one hour. And then you have your nice pumpkin pie. You see how watery it looks too? The pan also helps. It's watery and sloshy. So when you're putting it in the oven, it won't slosh out on you if you're trying to do one pie at a time. If you do them both like this, then it's going to go into the oven really easily and really a lot better for you without sloshing a whole lot. Now let's go ahead and do that. See how it starts to slosh a little bit. Okay. Now, we get them in the oven, like I said, for about an hour. Maybe a little longer depending on how your oven heats up. I'm working with a gas oven, so my oven heats up pretty good. 
So, I'll come back and show you what it looks like in an hour from now. Thanks. Okay, and I just pulled the pumpkin pies out of the oven, and this is what they should look like, just golden brown. Um, you can see that it kind of cracked a little bit over here, but that's okay because you're going to cut it anyway. Sorry about the noise, I had something else going. You're going to cut it anyway, so don't worry about the little imperfections, but what you want to do is you kind of want to take them off of this baking sheet and let them cool off. I'm going to do that in a few minutes. Um, I'm not going to do it now and risk breaking the, the pie crust. Um, but that's what they look like, all done. And it took about, I would say, maybe six minutes to prepare the um, pie filling. And I just took frozen uh, pie crust right out of the freezer. I set them over here, I preheated my oven, and then it took about an hour to bake them. Um, so all in all, probably an hour and ten minutes maybe. Um, and you have your pumpkin pies. And I'll tell you what you can do. Um, let me see. I'm not getting in the way here. Hold on. Let's see. Now, you can do it the same way that you do a cake. You can take a toothpick, just a regular ordinary toothpick, and kind of poke in the center of it. And if it comes out clean like that, then your pies are done. And these come out very clean. And that's the same way that you check on a cake. Only with pies, you, you might need to let them cool a little bit longer. Usually with a cake, I let it cool for 45 minutes before frosting. But pies, I let it cool for maybe an hour, maybe two hours. Let it cool off before you refrigerate it. And I'll tell you why real quick. If you put them directly in the refrigerator while they're still warm, what it's going to do is it's going to separate your filling from your pie crust. And, um, yeah, I speak from experience. I know that. Um, but you need to let it cool off to where it's cool to the touch where you can grab the bottom of the pie pan. Um, you can move it around more easily. They're very hot right now, so I'm not going to do that. But, like I said, if you refrigerate them before the hour or two is up, it's going to separate your, your pie filling from your pie crust. And it's just going to look not all that pretty. Um, you don't want to do that. Plus it's going to cool it off too quickly and you don't want to cool off any food too quickly. Um, just let them sit there. If you have a baking rack, you can transfer them over to a baking rack. Let them cool there for, like I said, an hour, hour and a half. And then you're good to go. Put some Cool Whip on top. I love Cool Whip on top. And the great thing is, um, you don't have to wait any longer. It's ready for after dinner. And you can just cut it in however many slices you want. Big slices, little slices, whatever. Put some Cool Whip on it and you're good to go. And there's your pumpkin pies. Thanks.